that there are three main classes of systems of equations, right? The first one is the most common, that's called a consistent system. A consistent system is just when you have line number one, line number two, they cross somewhere, and then they have a common intersection point, that's the solution, so we could say it's consistent. Right? But we also could have the possibility of having two parallel lines that never cross anywhere. And so there's no solution for that. That's called an inconsistent system, right? Because there's no solution. Uh, and then we have a third case where it, it looks like there's two equations, but they actually turn out to be the same equation with basically both lines sitting right on top of each other. Like literally they end up being the exact same lines. And we call that a dependent system. And we're going to get into solving all of these kinds of equations, but here we're going to learn how to use the technique of graphing. Now, the one thing I'll tell you is a lot of students will ask right in the beginning, why do we have so many different ways of solving systems of equations? <clears throat> well, the first answer is systems of equations are really, really important. And I'll get on into that in just a minute after we finish our first example, why they're so important or give you some motivation. But the other real reason is when you're reading something off of a graph to find the answer, it's actually hard to be very precise. In these examples, the lines are going to cross at very specific points, uh, so it's easy to read them. But if the lines cross at negative 3.125 comma negative 2.796, it's hard to read that off a of graph. So these, just keep in mind, graphing is a very important way to learn how to solve systems, but it's not excellent and amazingly precise if you have to read decimal points. So that's why we have other methods. So let's jump right into it and solve our first system of equation by graphing. The system is the following. y is equal to 4x, uh, and the other equation in the system is x plus y is equal to 10. Now right away you can see that, that this one is given in slope-intercept form, mx plus b, of course b is 0 here, and this one's given in standard form. It doesn't matter how I give you the equations or how your test gives you your equations. You know it's a linear equation because you know that x and y are the only two variables and they only have single power exponents. There's no squares or cubes or anything like that. So that's all you need to know. If it's just x and y with no exponents other than one, it's a linear equation. It, it forms a line. So what we're going to do is work down here. Now this, <clears throat> this line is very easy because it's already in slope-intercept form. So the slope here is 4 and the y-intercept is 0. Very simple. On the other one, we have to do a little work first. Let's solve for y. We'll subtract x, so we subtract it from both sides. Now that we have this here, we know that the slope is negative 1 because it's what's in front of the x, and the y-intercept is 10. So what we're going to do is graph both of these and see if we can figure out what the intersection point is just from the graph. So the first one, the y-intercept is 0, which means it goes right through the origin. y is equal to 0 right there. And the slope is 4, which, don't forget, when you have a whole number, it's really 4 over 1. That means you rise 4 and you run 1 to the right. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. So this is the second uh, line right there. All right. And so what we're going to do, just double checking myself here before we go on, is do our best to line this up. It's really important when you do your graphing, if you're really trying to fall, find a, a solution by graphing, to really take a second and line everything up, get a good straight edge and all of that. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time because you're really depending on having straight lines. And even this line isn't perfect, but it's close enough for what we're going to do today. Now, the next line is um, y-intercept of 10. So we can go right up here to where we have 10. It's going to go through this point. And the slope is negative 1. But don't forget, this is negative 1 over 1. That's how you write it. So we rise down, and we go over to the right 1. So we rise down, go over to the right 1. So this line is actually going to go through this point. And so what we will do is do our best to go like this. All right. Now, that's about as best I can do, I mean, without <laughs> spending hours and hours and hours. So when we look over here, we try to figure out where is an intersection point. Obviously, it's right here. What is that intersection point? So here's 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's 1, 2. And so that means that's 8 comma, um, I'm sorry, um, sorry, 2 over to the right and 8 up. So x comma y is 2 comma 8. And that is the solution. Now what you're really looking for is to see that this intersection point right here is, is really easy to read. I mean, you can't see it probably from there, but the way I drew the lines, it's, it's pretty much right on the, on the crosshairs here at 2, 8. 
but is, is as accurate as I tried to be. It's still like a millimeter or two to the right. Now, I know that the solution to the system of equations, because I've already worked it out uh, by other means, I know that it's exactly 2 comma 8. But by drawing things, even on graph paper, unless it's like exactly on the bullseye, you really, you know, what if it's just a tiny bit to the right? What if it's a tiny bit to the left? So that's the reason why graphing systems of equations is not the way that we're typically going to solve these systems of equations. But for this one, we can see the intersection point is pretty much bullseye on 2 comma 8 is the solution, which means it satisfies this equation, and it also satisfies this equation. And because it has a, a solution like this, we call it a consistent system. Whoops, system. All right, consistent system. So if you have an intersection point, you call it consistent. Uh, and we'll get to some other ones later where we don't. We'll call it inconsistent or we'll call it dependent. Okay. So we read the intersection point off. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about before we go on to the next example is why do we care about systems of equations so much? I mentioned this in the last section, but I'll reiterate it here. It doesn't really matter what branch of science or engineering or mathematics that you really are dealing with. Solving systems of equations is one of the main things that we use to find answers to real life problems. So for instance, this purple curve, this purple line, and this blue line. I know right now they're just lines. You don't know what they mean. Who cares? They're just y equals mx plus b. But when you get down the road, when you might be studying uh, electric circuits, let's say, you might have current flowing around one, electric current flowing around one part of the circuit and voltage across some point in the circuit. And this x and y here, it, it may not be x and y, this might be the current flowing in some part of the circuit and the y might be the voltage across some point in the circuit. So this blue line might not just be some line, it might be the current and voltage relationship in some part of a circuit, right? And then likewise, the purple line could be the current and the voltage. X and Y would represent the current and the voltage, but uh, across a different component in the circuit somewhere, right? So then you would have a, a line representing the current and the voltage uh, here, and a line representing the current and the voltage there. But by trying to find the solution, you might be trying to find the current and the voltage that satisfies both parts of the circuit at the same time. So you might be building something really practical, like you might be building a radio, and you need to figure out what the current and the voltage is in the antenna. So you might write a couple of equations for the current and the voltage of the different components, and then solve them, just like we're solving them here to find out what the solution to that system is. I know it's kind of hard without a real example, but I could go on and on. When you talk about building a bridge, you know, you have the, uh, the, uh, the, the structural members, the, 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 the parts of the bridge that go up and down that kind of hold the thing up, right? You know you've all seen pictures of bridges, right? So engineers, they figure out what are the forces in all of those different columns and beams that are supporting the bridges. And the way that you actually solve for all, the, all of the different forces is, guess what? You write a system of equations that govern the forces and the reaction forces everywhere, you write a big system of equations. that, go, And then all of those variables, x and y, they're all the different forces in the bridge. And then you might graph them like this, or you might solve them other ways that we'll learn later to figure out what the different forces are, because it's probably a good idea to know how strong your bridge is, right? So this stuff, even though it doesn't seem important, is crucially important. All right, so now what we need to do is erase and solve another uh, system of equations. All right, for our next set of equations we'll solve by graphing is going to be 2x minus y equals negative 2. Uh, and also, uh, the other equation is x minus y is equal to 1. So we have to graph them. So the easiest way to do that is to change them into slope-intercept form. So we solve for y. So we move the 2x over by subtraction. We'll get negative y is negative 2x minus 2. Just subtract 2x from both sides. And then we have to divide by negative 1. So y will be negative 2x divided by negative 1 minus 2 divided by negative 1. So we just divide by negative 1. And then we have to go and carry out the division. This becomes positive 2x. These negatives, uh, you can think of it as division or multiplication. Either way, they cancel into a positive. So you get 2x plus 2. That's equation number 1. And then equation number 2 is even easier because you just move the x over by subtraction negative x plus 1, and then we have to divide by negative 1 again. So negative uh, x over negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1. So you'll have x minus 1. Just divide these to get the positive, divide these to get the negative. And then we just have to graph them. So the y-intercept of the blue curve is 2. That means we go over here to 2, and we put a dot right there. And then the rise over run is, the slope is 2, which means rise 2 
over to, this is two over one. So we rise up to over one, which means the secondary point or a second point on that line to help me draw it. Something like this. All right, so that's gonna be line number one. And then line number two has a y-intercept of negative one. So we'll draw a line or a dot right here, y-intercept negative one, and a slope of one, which is one over one, which means rise over run, go up one over to the right number one right here as well. And so what we'll have there is going to be as best we can get something like this. All right. So almost dead bullseye, what we get is a, is a part in the middle here, right here, of what is it? Negative one, negative two, negative three. And then we go down negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Whoops. Negative three, negative four. So that's the solution. So we have the solution, negative three, negative four. And because it has a solution like this, we say it's consistent. So you can have all kinds of variations on your exams. You might have uh, something like, tell me if it's a consistent system. You know, tell me if it's an inconsistent system, whatever. So try to figure out if it has a solution, and if it does, it's a consistent system. Now this one happened to cross bullseye right on negative one, two, three, negative four. But let me tell you something. When I solved this problem myself by hand, I had to get really good graph paper out to actually figure out what the solution point was. I first tried to sketch it on just notebook paper, you know, doing my best to, to do it as good as I could. But what happens is, you see, the y-intercepts are all over here. And then you're doing rise over run, so your second point for the line is over here. So you see, when you draw, when you draw a line through two points like this, you have to be very exact or else just a tiny little bit off. Like you see the, these two points, even if I was just a little bit off, I wouldn't hit the intersection point way down there. So it's kind of one of those things. You have to be as precise as possible when you're graphing solutions of equations. You have to take your time and make sure that your lines are really, really straight. Otherwise, they're not gonna cross in exactly the right spot. And that's one of the reasons why we do use graphing to solve these things, but we also use other techniques like, like a substitution that we'll learn a little bit later. So let's erase this set and we'll do one more uh, solution by graphing. All right, the last problem we have here is y is equal to negative uh, x plus 7 and the other part of the system is 2x minus y equals negative 1. 2x minus y is equal to negative 1. So let's go ahead and solve these guys. Now this one's already in mx plus b form, so we can actually graph this one right away. But let's go ahead and take a minute to, to move this one around. So we'll subtract the 2x. We'll get negative 2x minus 1. Subtract here, get 0. Subtract here, get this. We'll divide by the negative 1. And so we'll get negative 2x over negative 1 minus 1 over negative 1. So what we'll get, we'll divide those, and we'll just get 2x, and this will be a positive 1. So we have two equations. The first one is negative x plus 7. The second equation is 2x um, plus 1. So in order to graph the first equation, this one, the y-intercept is 7. So we go up to 7, and we do a y-intercept right here. And um, the slope here is negative 1, which means the slope is negative 1, which is negative 1 over 1. So that means we rise down because it's negative, and we go over to the right 1. <clears throat> so we go down one over one. So here, here's the, uh, the value there. And then what we can do is do our best to draw a line through all, through these points here, like this. So here's line number one. And then we move on to the second one, and we see we have two x plus one, the y-intercept is one, so we just put a dot right here at one. And then this slope is 2, so the slope is 2, which is 2 over 1, which means we go up 2 over 1. So we go up 2 over 1, so there's our next point. And then we draw our line through there. If I can line it up properly. Something like that. So it looks like it's a bullseye, direct hit, for lack of a better word. And the intersection point is right here, uh, over 2, and up here to the 5 mark. So 2 comma 5. So we say that we have 2 comma 5 is the solution, and we say it's consistent. Whoops, consistent. 
All right. So that's about all I have for today, for this lesson. We're going to do more solutions by graphing. We'll do a couple of examples that involve, uh, instead of consistent systems all the time where they cross, we'll do a couple of examples where they're inconsistent and there's no solution, or they're dependent systems. So we'll do that real quick. But ultimately, we're not going to spend too much time graphing these things, because by now, you should know how to graph lines. And you should also know that every single example I've picked for you where they have an intersection point is a nice intersection point that you can read off the graph. If this intersection point really was somewhere else at 2.375 comma 5, it would be really impossible for you to read 2.375. So after we get done with learning how to graph, we will then learn how to solve systems of equations exactly just using algebra and no graphing. So we'll get exact answers and that's generally what you'll do going forward. But for now, follow me to the next lesson. We'll solve some more systems by graphing and you can see what a consistent system uh, compares to an inconsistent and a dependent system of equations. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.